Okay, so it's Saturday again. It's uh, just about the end of March here. We're just about done with March. It's 35 degrees outside, so not exactly optimal weekend weather so far. But, so what I'm going to do is work inside the boat, and I'm going to start today on the top of the forward V-berth. I'm going to go do some sanding. That'll be fun. The good thing about us being in this social isolation, social distancing, coronavirus crap is I'm eating stuff that's been in the back of the cupboards forever. So by the time this is all done, I'll be tro probably totally out of food, but at least I'll have eaten that stuff. I ate some granola kind of stuff that I didn't even know I had this morning for breakfast and whoa. So a little worried about running out of wine because the liquor stores have just been crazy. But other than that, we're in good shape. The dog's got plenty of food. I got plenty of treats for her. So we're covered there. So um, I got a sweatshirt on. I got a t-shirt underneath that. I'm going to put a hoodie on over this. I don't know if I'm going to be able to film this much because I, I'm going to have to have the power cord up in there for the sander. And it's kind of cloudy, so I don't really think we're going to have great light. We'll see. I'll give it a try. But anyway, that's the plan today is to do some of that nasty sanding work. Get that out of the way. So let's get to it. All right, well, I got a little bit of work done, but I got all the sanding done. I showed you that, but I'm looking at the sky over there and it is looking pretty black. So I'm thinking maybe it's time to close the boat back up and work inside the garage here for a bit. All right, well, what we have here is our first test fit. This would go way in the front and just Flexing this by hand, it's not very flexible, so I'm not sure if this is going to work or not. But there it is. All right, I'm not feeling too optimistic. So, I don't know if you can see the bow there, but it's pretty severe up at the front. And now maybe we can see it. So anyway, I'm going to go see what I can do. Maybe what I'll do is I'll see if I can set the camera here in the corner and go give this a whirl, but I am not all that convinced this is going to work. That's the most extreme part, so maybe I should try to do that. Maybe it'd be better to start back here, because that's going to be manageable. Okay, well I've cut my first piece for the top of the V-berth, and I, if I measured right, I left enough room to get it in here, but we'll see. So I thought I'd film this just in case there's swearing and do-overs and all that kind of stuff. So let's see what happens.
Okay, well I see where I've gone wrong here. I measured my opening from there to there, but what I neglected to take into account was the drop there. So I've shoved that in as far as it will go, and it ain't go no go no mo. So what I'll do is I'll take this back out. Maybe I'll take 12 inches off of it, or 10 inches at least. Maybe 12 just to be safe, and then try this again. And once I get it, that chunk in there, then the rest should be much less of an issue. And I'll have learned my lesson. Instead of 32 inches, I'll do like 24 two foot chunks. In fact, I might just cut this one in half. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna cut it right down the middle. No sense fighting it, that'll make it easier to put a bow in it too. So cut twice, measure twice, or something like that. Okay, well, so that episode with the plywood didn't go so well. And I reached out to some guys on the Facebook page. There's a Facebook group for that's all Santana 22s. Just to see, I asked two questions. First of all, I asked about the chain plates, if those should just come out. And the one guy answered me and said, oh, yeah, they should come out. Well, mine don't. And then I asked about the spongy, springy top, and I got the answer that I have been trying to avoid all this time. As I've been pulling the screws out, I think my screws, and I'll double check this, I'm going to pull one out of the center line where that, that uh, whisker pull runner thing is down, but I believe my screws are inch long or three quarters of an inch or whatever, which makes me believe what I didn't want to believe, that there is actually a cord deck up on top there, which what that means is there's a layer of fiberglass that I'm looking at inside of the boat when I'm looking up at the bottom. Then there's coring material, which in a lot of cases was balsa wood, and then there's that layer of fiberglass on the top. And I think I think I kind of was starting, I, I really didn't think there was coring there. I thought this old and small of a boat, it would just be thick fiberglass. When I'm Looking at the windows, the windows are about three-eighths of an inch thick, the, the side, and it looks to me like it's just fiberglass there. So that's what I thought I was dealing with on the top of that foredeck. Now I'm starting to think it's cord fiberglass, and I got a big problem here. So I guess where I'm at is I needed to sit down and have a glass of wine and think about this one for a minute, is this is getting bigger than I thought it was going to be, but I'm kind of stuck with this dilemma here. I'm trying to figure out, is this worth it, or do I just sink this damn boat somewhere, or throw it away, or donate it, or get rid of it and be done? But I'm a stubborn SOB, and um, I'm kind of feeling like I want to do this right, and if that is in fact the case, I mean, it's like kind of why mess around with any part of the boat if I'm not going to make the boat properly fixed. And if I hadn't spent a whole season already painting the exterior and working over the bottom and all that kind of stuff, then I probably would just give up at this point and say, you know what, maybe this isn't, thing isn't worth fixing. But I feel like I'm at the point where I need to pull one of those screws out, verify that in fact I don't have just a 3 8 inch plywood. If I've got a cord surface there, then I've got problems and that coring is probably rotted. And that would make sense as much water intrusion as I've seen down in those corners by the windows. I think I've been getting water in this deck for a while and I'll bet that if I pull up that fiberglass top, it's, it's a mess under there. So, what I think I'm going to do tomorrow morning is, assuming it's not snowing, is I'm going to pull those screws out and see what I'm dealing with. If I really am dealing with an inch or three quarters of an inch, then I have a, indeed a cord sandwiched top deck there. And realistically, if that's the case, then I'm going to tap it out and see how much of it is sounding like it's delaminated in there or rotted 
And, but I'm, my guess is probably from where that front deck drops down and I may go out there tomorrow and I'll kind of show you where I'm thinking, but I'm thinking that whole top deck is going to have to come up as one piece. Now it's not a huge piece in terms of the amount of space. And I just watched a, a guy that did a really good four part YouTube series on this exact thing. Now he's working on a flat surface and he cut in some three quarter inch plywood. He had to bend it a tiny little bit. So he cut a bunch of relief cuts in there. So I'm not sure what I'll use for corning material. I may have to do a little research, but I'm gonna, I'll put a link to that guy's thing here just in case anyone's watching this and wants to see what he did because it was a pretty informative four part series on how he took it out, cut it out, took the corning material out, put new corning material in and then glassed it all back in. So it was really helpful. And um, so anyway, I, I'm gonna go start on that in the morning. And if I don't throw in the towel and just junk the whole mess, then I might as well fix it right. I don't really think I'm still much money into this project. The fiberglass resin, obviously buying my little cans at the Home Depot and gonna cut it. And he was using two different kinds of fiberglass, which I'll um, have to do a little research on finding where I can get that. And if I don't want to buy like industrial size packages of that stuff, but I think, I think I can do this. It's just a matter of, do I have the guts to do it? And am I willing to take a saw out there and cut that whole top off and get in that far? Because if I do that, the boat's out in the open, you know, every time I work on it until it's all sealed back up, I'm going to have to put a tarp over it or something because obviously if I'm trying to get the thing dried out and get the water out, I don't want to be in a situation where there's water coming back in. So the complexity factor of this project just went up by a factor of 10. But damn it, you know, if you're going to do a job, you might as well do it right or not bother doing it. And so that's, I guess, what I'm trying to decide is do I do it right or do I just give up on it and not do it? So probably tomorrow we'll tell. We'll see. But that's where I'm at. I'm going to wrap this episode up. Get this one in the can because I think as I open up this can of worms, this is going to be its whole own episode. So let's come back to that and see where we wind up. I'm going to go finish my glass of wine and see where we wind up with this project tomorrow. Thanks for watching. And uh, don't go anywhere. I'm not. <laughs>